Mm. Voting began September 23rd, and for the first time in nearly a decade, voters in the Osseo School District will decide whether to raise their taxes to help fund needs in the classroom. Delane Cleveland explains more. Delane? Shannon, voters will have two questions on the ballot this fall. One is an operating levy that will pay for day-to-day -day learning and instructional needs, and the other is a technology levy that would pay for technology related to classroom learning needs as well as safety and security systems. The district is hosting a series of upcoming informational meetings where people can learn more about the ballot questions. So you'll be able to talk to leaders, district leadership, school board members one on one about any questions that you might have moving forward as well so that you are informed as you uh, fill out the ballot this fall. The school board voted unanimously to put the two questions on the ballot last March. The voters last approved operating and technology levies in 2013. Those levies are set to expire next year. In the time since the last levies were approved, district officials say needs have grown significantly, while the state's financial contributions have not kept up with inflation. If voters approve both levies, the average impact for the owner of a $250,000 home would be around $9 a month. So 84% of our budget goes towards staff. So if we do not receive funding uh, next school year, $5 million will need to be cut right off the bat. And then the next year would be 450 staff members and a significant budget cut, obviously, from that. The first informational meeting happens on Tuesday, September 20th at Osseo Senior High at 6 p.m. Two more meetings are planned for October. For a list of all the dates and times and for more information on the ballot questions, we have a link on our website at ccxmedia.org. Shannon? The largest school district in the state is proposing boundary changes. Anoka Hennepin officials say because of enrollment growth in Dayton, Champlin, and Blaine, change is needed. High school or middle school boundaries are not changing, but there are five elementary schools that will be impacted. Dayton, Oxbow Creek, Champlin Brooklyn Park Academy, Monroe, and Evergreen Park. Officials say they have more schools clustered in the southern part of the district and fewer schools in the northern part where there's a significant enrollment increase. As a result of the exploding population in those areas, it's creating pressure on the fewer schools in those areas, uh, which is causing an impact on programming. So that has us looking at schools, elementary schools across the district. The proposals will be presented along with community feedback at the September 26th board meeting. The board is expected to approve the final plans at its November 21st meeting, and the changes would go into effect the following school year. Robinsell officials are considering updating Sanborn Park, and they want feedback from the community. Reporter Sonia Goins shows us what they're considering doing to the neighborhood park. It's a space that a lot of people come and congregate. Sanborn Park is a perfect spot to walk your dog or enjoy the playground. The neighborhood park sits right off Crystal Lake and has a picnic area, outdoor hockey rink, baseball fields, and tennis and basketball courts, but they're outdated. This is a beautiful space. I think that the community could use a little spruce it up around here. The city is considering turning this old building into storage space and a meeting spot for residents. We're not talking about a 500 person rental hall or anything like that, but there is certainly a value to the community to be able to host a, a birthday party or to be able to host a, uh, a graduation party in a park space. And Robbinsdale officials are trying to figure out what to do with this empty green space. Maybe a soccer field or something. Resident Mary Hausauer says she would also like to see the picnic area expanded. Every weekend is always full. For now, city officials say nothing is set in stone and they want ideas. I think that it'd be amazing to see more community in this kind of revitalized a little bit. The next open house is October 11th at City Hall. Officials hope to present their recommendations to the full city council by the end of the year. In Robbinsdale, Sonia Goins, CCX News. A Plymouth nonprofit is expanding one of its main revenue generators to help serve more people. Interfaith Outreach and Community Partners is expanding its resale select store. The store sells gently used and new clothes and other items. The proceeds help serve families in need. Our goal is to raise the revenue. We've got a budget goal of 650000 We also help them with 
clothing and household needs, furniture, this sort of thing. Recently, the store added another room called Resale Select 2. The extra space features like new furniture, pictures, knickknacks, and small appliances. The store partnered with local businesses to offer high-end merchandise at an affordable price. We hand select for our customers and then we have that one-on-one -on -one contact with the customers making them feel good and uh, do good, feel good, uh, look good is our, our tagline. The Resale Select store is open Monday through Friday and on Select Saturdays. A Plymouth woman is once again on a mission to collect coats for a big event that's fueled by kindness. This year, 3,000 Acts of Kindness is set for December 12th. It's a day for people experiencing homelessness um, to come in and get the things that they need um, and to get um, companionship and someone to talk to and just relax. Danielle is founder of Coated in Love and is leading a coat and winterwear drive. Donations are coming in at Calvary Church in Golden Valley. They will be sorted and handed out to people experiencing homelessness as part of the 3,000 Acts of Kindness Day. Danielle says she does this to let people experiencing homelessness know that they matter. The biggest thing last year was thank you, thank you. I sat down and had lunch with a volunteer. I talked to someone, someone prayed with me, someone cut my hair and asked how my day was. Um, and it's just really the simple things in life that mean so much. 3,000 Acts of Kindness is scheduled for December 12th at the Minneapolis Convention Center. Until then, you can drop off new coats and winter gear at Calvary Lutheran Church in Golden Valley. You can sign up to volunteer or to learn more about this event at CodedInLove.org.